it's no fun when our kids are sick, but we may just have found the silver lining. Apple and raspberry and orange flavoured electrolyte slushies made by Rehydrate. Rehydrate slushies are a tasty way to get essential electrolytes into our little ones when they're dehydrated from sickness or even just the Aussie heat. They're delicious and they'll help your little ones feel better in no time. Grab Rehydrate from Coles today. It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. I think the thing that resonates with anyone who reads it is just being exactly in that place at some point in time as a parent and feeling so inadequate to deal with the challenges that arise. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. G'day, this is Dr. Justin Coulson, author of six books about raising happy families. And I'm here with my wife and co-host, Mrs. Happy Family. Well, that's... I really like that name. It just makes me feel good about you. I'm here with my wife, Kylie, Mrs. Happy Families, mum to our six daughters. And uh, Kylie, we've had some feedback via podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. Kathy from Brisbane sent us a beautiful email about some of the things that she experienced as she read your forward from 21 Days to a Happier Family. It's nice to have you with us, Kathy. Thank you so much. Can you tell us, Kathy, what was it about the Ford that really resonated with you? Obviously, the title speaks for itself, 21 Days to a Happier Family. Um, I listened to Justin for quite a while and he does resonate with me. I think he makes um, the psychology behind parenting really simple. But um, when I read the Ford, I was actually blown away by how um, relevant and how um, Justin had been so raw and real about his experiences. So even... Um, talking about disciplining um, a child and then regretting it because he'd been a bit hard on um, because I've sort of found myself in a similar position. And, you know, I've talked with other mums. I'm I'm a pretty new mum. I've got a three-year-old and now I've got two baby twins. So um, I guess that's why I'm trying to get it right now, you know, and it's really resonating with me because when I grew up, we'd get smacked. We'd get get disciplined pretty severely. But um, reading through your book, it was a combination of like a controlling kind of parents that I had and also permissive. So it's really interesting, but we got really punished and I just don't want to, I think that affected us in a way that we never then opened up with our parents in a way that I want my three sons to open up to me in the future. And I feel like I'm harming their trust with even just the fleeting, um, hard discipline experience that I've had already with my older son in particular, you know, so Does that hard. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, and we've tricky. all been there. You know, you, you're just so so petrified that what you're doing is is going to mess them up and it, it feels like everything's an experiment, but if the experiment goes wrong, we might actually just e- explode everything all over the lab. I actually exactly. have a friend, Kathy, who says that she's saving for their therapy <laughs> in oh, 20 I, years I wonder time. how much we have to put aside. What, what is a dollar today worth in the future? <laughs> I think we've all been there. I'm wondering if you could share with us a little bit about these feelings of insecurity that you have about trying to raise a happy family. You know, it sounds like you're right in there in the trenches. You've got a three-year-old and two baby twins. That's so amazing. Um, But, you know, as mums, we have this sense of inadequacy all the time. And I don't know necessarily whether it's coming from a social media platform or whether or not it's just this innate thing in us that we just feel like we can never do enough. But what what is it for you that leaves you feeling this sense of inadequacy? Yeah, well, interesting you should say the social media platform because on a slightly unrelated note, because I've got baby twins, I'm on all the groups with babies now and, you know, they're all sleeping through the night or they're doing this and that and Meanwhile, I'm up five times a night and I think, what am I doing wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Where's the manual? And that translates exactly into the parenting part, I guess, with my older child. And when these boys get older too, um, what am I doing things right now to plant the seed for a you know trusting, happy, open relationship in the future? Um, probably the, there's things that resonated for me in the foreword. The part that resonated with me is about the disciplining and um, Justin opens up about smacking a child and um, I've done that and I've played it down by saying I've hit you know I gave him a little tap on his nappy bottom but really I smacked him so um, and with my parents I was disciplined 
<laughs> more hard than that. You know, smacks were proper smacks. And I never opened up to my parents. I never told them what I was doing. I never really had an open, trusting relationship with them. I hid things from them. I rebelled. I had a fun but terrible teenagehood. Um, and I don't want my boys to be like that. I want them to open up to me and tell me what they're doing. Well, Kathy, we're so grateful that you took the time to email us via podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. Uh, it, it means so very much. Thank you for that. I'm, I think that I should read 21 Days to a Happier Family as part of this podcast so that people can find out a bit more about what resonated so well with Kathy. Well, let's do that after the break. It's the Happy Families Podcast. For a happier family, try a Happy Families membership because a happy family doesn't just happen. Details at happyfamilies.com.au. I'm always looking for new ways to stay connected with my children while giving them the opportunity to have the same level of freedom I enjoyed when I was their age. Oh, those were the days. The Space Talk Adventurer Watch has given our daughter the freedom that she craves while also giving us the peace of mind of knowing where she is via GPS location updates. And we can also easily check in with her via a phone call or a text message to her watch. Space Talk watches don't have access to social media, apps or any other internet services like mobile phones do. So you can feel good that you're providing them with a safe and secure device that lets kids be kids in a modern world. And that's why we love it. Available at major retailers and online at spacetalkwatch.com. It's the Happy Families podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. I'm feeling a bit nervous. I love the idea of doing this reading on the podcast. We've never done anything like this before. I'm going to keep it short, uh, but because I'd like to read the whole book in some ways, but I do also want to highlight that this particular thing that I'm going to read is very hard for me to read. Uh, I I hate the story. I hate telling it. I'm very sensitive about it and I wish it had never happened. Uh, But in spite of that, I know that it resonates with a lot of people. So, Here we go. This is from my book, 21 Days to a Happier Family, by me, Dr. Justin Coulson. Forward. We all have moments with our children that we wish we could take back. It was one of those moments that acted as a critical pivot point in my life and my family's. Most parenting books don't start with a confession from the author, but if you're struggling in your family, I want you to know that I've been there, and I often still am. I've made the mistakes. I do understand. As a young dad, I was struggling. My idea of child rearing was to have cute children who would bring me joy, grow up, go to school, become teenagers, and that's that. I'd clearly never contemplated the realities of parenting. I knew that other people had challenges with their children, but I guess those parents had no idea how to say no to their children, that they were complete pushovers. My expectation was that now and then my children would need to be told to change their behavior and my demands would be met. End of story. With no preparation for parenthood and no idea about what I was doing when the children arrived, it's probably no surprise that my experience failed to match my expectations. Having a baby was a joy at times, but dealing with sleepless nights, severe reflux, feeding challenges, and the other usual issues left me feeling out of my depth. Using naivety as a shield for my incompetence, I passed all child-rearing duties to my wife, Kylie. Fortunately, Kylie was better prepared, but it was having a toddler that really sent me into a spin. Within months of our first daughter beginning to assert a desire for independent thought and action, I became an angry disciplinarian. I threatened, I yelled, I withdrew privileges from a toddler, and I smacked regularly. And I could not be told by anyone how I might deal with the situation better. My toddler had become the enemy and from my perspective had to be broken in the same way a cowboy breaks in a horse Toddlerhood, I decided, had to be defeated, and it was my job to tame my daughter and make sure she understood who was boss. You've become very hard, Justin. My grandmother gently chided me. And I agreed. You've got to be, otherwise the little rats will run riot all over you. Nan was unimpressed with my response. My mother-in-law suggested a softer approach. She has to learn, was my instant rebuttal. My refusal to listen to those with wisdom and experience only highlighted my immaturity. I knew better. But if I did know better, why was I struggling so badly? My punitive responses to my toddler's challenging behavior increased. She turned three. The terrible twos migrated with her into a new, harder-to-deal-with age bracket. As my toddler grew, I expected more of her, but she wasn't getting any easier to manage. And despite being aware that what I was doing wasn't working... I became increasingly convinced that I had to be hard on my daughter to stop those toddler tantrums. After all, 
If something doesn't work, you should do more of it to get a result, shouldn't you? One Saturday afternoon, Kylie left our two children with me while she ran a short errand. Our baby, Abby, was just a couple of months old. Chanel was three years older to the day. Me? I'd been up late the night before and only slept a handful of hours before getting up for work at 5am that Saturday morning. I was exhausted. Within moments of Kylie leaving, Chanel began to act up. My efforts to calm her by telling her to stop it now were ineffective. Her tantrum escalated. Her fraught emotions were contagious and it didn't take any time at all for me to catch the intensity of them. As her tantrum began to build, I matched her upset with my anger. My first reaction was to threaten her. Then I moved on to punishing my three-year-old by locking her in her room. Next, I yelled and threatened because she was kicking the door. She responded with more anger, and so I opened the door and dragged her into the living room where I smacked her several times. Hard. She had to learn a lesson. She had to respect me. I was in charge. It will come as no surprise to any experienced parent that my discipline brought with it unintended consequences. Chanel became louder. She screamed more rather than less. She cried. And for some reason, I'd expected something different. Now, I was scared the baby would wake up. My anger increased and my response was furious. I forced Chanel back into her bedroom and threw her onto her bed amid a torrid combination of my venomous threats and her frightened and angry screams, cries and tears. Angry at her and angry at myself, I held the door by the handle as she sobbed, kicked and tried to get out of her room. I hated being out of control, and I hated her for making me feel and act this way. Yet something told me that Chanel had not made me do anything. In my heart, I knew that I was responsible for how I had behaved. Not her. She was acting like a toddler, and me? I was having as big a tantrum as she was, only I was double her height and seven times her weight. I had betrayed her with my anger, but I had also betrayed myself, and I had used her as a justification for my angry behaviour. As I hung onto that door handle, the light bulb moment occurred. This is not how a father ought to treat his child. A quote came to mind. The only time a father should lay his hands on his children is to bless them. And I was falling short. My hands were anything but a blessing to my little one. If I was being like this with a three-year-old, how was I going to survive with a 16-year-old? And how would she survive? When Chanel finally stopped fighting with the door handle and, I guess, helplessly succumbed to her bedroom prison, I walked into the backyard for some air and some clarity. With my back against the door, I stared at the overgrown former vegetable patch of our rental property and tried to drink in the newfound peace of this quiet, sunny Queensland afternoon. But there was no peace inside me, only guilt-induced emotional pain. I am a bad father. I knew it. In spite of all of the wonderful interactions I'd had with my daughter, I was getting it wrong every time her behavior became challenging, and I had no idea what to do about it. My impatient responses lacked any semblance of understanding, perspective, compassion, or kindness. I was only interested in stopping her from being so damn inconvenient. The only tool I was using was my power to coerce and control, and the power struggles were harming her trust in me. I also knew Kylie was wondering what kind of person she'd married. I was failing my family. The epiphany was completed when I heard a tremendous fight happening in a backyard a few doors down. A father was screaming at a toddler whose tantrum was at full force within moments. It was as though my previous interactions with my daughter were being replayed so that I could witness exactly how my behaviour sounded. And it stung. I know that that's a really hard experience for you to share. I'm sitting here with (laughs) wet eyes, for goodness sakes. I hate sharing that experience because I feel so much regret. I think the thing that resonates with anyone who reads it is just being exactly in that place at some point in time as a parent and feeling so inadequate to deal with the challenges that arise for each of us. So I'm really grateful for that experience because that experience literally transformed our family that day. It did. It led to um, it led to some big changes, and we still don't make any claims to parenting perfection. We still get it wrong so much. Uh, look at us, these two weeping messes. Uh, but the book is called 
21 Days to a Happier Family. You can get it online everywhere. You can pop into bookstores. I'm sure that they'll be able to grab hold of a copy for you as well. And we would love for you to, oh, you can even get it at happyfamilies.com.au. You'll probably pay more. We can't seem to get it as cheap as some of the other retailers, but um, it's available pretty much wherever you want to find good books. 21 Days to a Happier Family. Uh, thanks for indulging me and letting me read. And Kathy, thanks so much for that email podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. We love your feedback coming through and we hope that this has been a helpful podcast. We appreciate Justin Rulon from Bridge Media for making it sound great. Craig Bruce, our executive producer, thanks for all of your effort, time and interest in the work that we do and making the podcast what it is today. If you'd like more information about how we can make your family happier, you can get that at happyfamilies.com.au.